call me and I would get him the information, even though he's not official until the ninth. Um, James, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself? There you are. Oops. Yes. Hola, I'm Kathy. Hi. Nice Hi, to it's good to be here. I'm, I'm James. It was nice speaking with you earlier, Kathy. Yeah. And you see Paisley, who is our public art coordinator over there with a friendly wave. And Marty Rabine, who is our city clerk, who keeps our life in order and makes this possible and makes many, many things possible in the city. <laughs> but mainly meeting tech right now. <laughs> Um, I, it's pretty much my life. James, congratulations. Thank you for being the one name on the consent agenda out last night that I could pronounce. <laughs> I was explaining to Paisley that I've been out of town for a couple of weeks and I didn't have a chance to review last night's agenda until I was actually in the moment having to read the agenda. And uh, I, I, I botched a bunch of names, but I'm pretty sure I got yours right. So welcome to the Public <laughs> Art Committee. They're a great group. <laughs> All right. Two um, points. I think I've got one more thing to start and then I'm gonna hand off hosting privileges to Paisley. Paisley, send me a text when you're done and I will get out of here. Marty, thanks much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we've got you guys streaming on our website now. So good, uh-huh. Cool. And I'm drinking coffee during the meeting. <laughs> Okay. We did have to talk to somebody about having a glass of wine at one point. Mm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We had to have that conversation. You're kidding. Oh, no. They, like, they thought they could have wine during the meeting? Yeah. Oops. It's okay. That's, that's after. Well, you know, you're in your house and it's, yeah. So, <laughs> and as long as it's in a water bottle, it's fine, though, right? I'm yeah. Mm -hmm. you got, as long yeah. as it's in a water bottle. <laughs> All that, right, here's your hosting. I will see you all later. Thank you, Marty. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mart. Paisley, water and wine and vodka and... <laughs> um, the only person I heard from that cannot be here tonight is Joe. Oh, so We should be expecting I wonder, everybody else. I wonder if he's working. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah, he's working. I miss him. I know. When he has to work. Joe works at the art museum. I don't James. think he is there any longer. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, he left, yeah, I think like maybe at the end of summer. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I know he's working at the Montana Club. I believe, yeah, that's where he's working tonight. Hmm. Well, or he might have another job. I just, I happen to see him there whenever, when sometimes in the evening, so... Well, James, we are so excited, like I said earlier. So, did, now, did you get an agenda, James? I did. I saw the agenda. Oh, cool. Yes, cool. I did. I received the agenda. Very cool. Well, we usually start close to on time. So I know. I was going to say, usually everybody's here five minutes early. Everybody's running a little late today. I actually signed on about 3.30 because I didn't know if you, I forgot to ask you when you were going to sign on, if you needed anything or da, 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 da. And then I signed off and then I came back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put the numbers up just so they're there. Cool. Thank you. Paisley, can you help me watch for hands or comments if they are coming in for outside, from outside? Yeah, for Thanks. sure. So far, we've never had a guest, but, <laughs> but for sure, I'll let you know if somebody's here. Well, you know, this <laughs> for the first time, I'm used to yeah. being the, sec the second in command slug. <laughs> I'll let you know. Oh. Hey, um, I was also going to ask you, can you help me remember um, some things if we talk later for the agenda next month? Um, I'll bring them there. They're not, nothing is for obviously this month, but 
I'm, I'll give you a call. And so we remember to add them for next month. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I usually make a note of it down under um, mm -hmm. upcoming or something to add it to the next one. Yeah. Stoney's here. Hi, Stoney. You're muted. Hi guys. Say I have. I'm just getting off another call, so I'm oh. just gonna. Uh, I'll. I'll be right back. No worries. Back to you. <clears throat> I hope we have a quorum. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the only one I heard from was Joe. Hmm. Well, I, I, Dennis and I have been talking, so I'm pretty sure he should be here unless he, something comes up unexpectedly. Hi, Dennis. Is he here? Huh. I think he's still connecting to audio, maybe. Okay. I'm see mine, I'm not getting. Sorry, I know I have to mute, so my mouse click. Yeah, I can only see a few of us. So yeah, I think that's just while I'm sharing my screen, but once once I take that down, you'll be able to see everybody. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, good. And there's Carrie logging on. Cool. Great. Well, I have 359, so we have a few minutes. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. Hi, Carrie. We're going to give you time to introduce yourself. Oh, but you can do it now. <laughs> um, well, I'll wait till everybody's here. It'll be official as soon as we call the meeting to order. An official introduction. It's a beautiful background, Stony. Thank you. Yeah, it's the Yellow Bay of Flathead Lake. Woohoo! Much better than my dark office. Do you have the advanced Zoom to be able to do that? I mean, we have, um, you know, we pay a monthly mm -hmm. Zoom fee. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, that gets me the background. I think it does. Does it? I need one of those cat filters. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't that just amazing? Could we all just be cats today? <laughs> exactly. It, we could each pick, or cats or dogs. We could do cats this meeting and dogs the next. So um, we have four of us. And is Dennis on? Yep, we've got Dennis, Danny, Stoney, Lisa. Oh, oh, Tom is here too, Carrie and James. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Hi. wonderful. So we have everyone here um, except Joe. I think we are good. Um, so I'm going to call um, the public art meeting to order for today. Um, I would like to announce the toll-free numbers for public con um, comment. 833-548-0282. Um, 833-548-0282. Eight 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 four seven five four four nine nine, and finally eight three three five four eight zero two seven six. So, um, of course, we welcome any public comment for those listening from those listening, and we will go ahead and get started with our agenda for the day. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce our guest, Carrie Fitcher from the International Wildlife Film Festival. And Carrie's here to talk about this year's festival and one project in particular that she would like us to support. And we're and is obviously open to ideas on how all the members think we can support her project. 
Thanks, Kathy. Um, I, my last name is um, spelled richer, but it's actually French Canadian. So I say Riche. Oh, so I love Carrie Riche. And um, it's so nice to be invited to the meeting. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I uh, am the artistic director of the International Wildlife Film Festival, which is, of course, operates underneath the, the Roxy Theater now. Um, a few years back, it used to go the other way where IWFF was the major organization with the Roxy Theater under, and we've just flipped um, recently. So um, the 44th festival is coming around the bend and will start April 17th in Missoula. Um, it will be a virtual festival and we will have a few outdoor screenings, one in Ogren Park and a few in our Roxy movie garden that it was built last, last summer behind the Roxy um, and it seats 24 people socially distanced. So we're, pursuing what we call a hybrid festival, where there are some um, physical outdoor events that are approached very safely and responsibly, as well as a virtual catalog where our 65 films will be online as well. And this was mostly, this is the fourth virtual festival I've put together this year. And I've been learning things every time as you do. And uh, I really felt like with spring coming um, and the warmer weather that it was really important to anchor the festival in the community and to have a physical aspect um, that was approached responsibly, mostly to call attention to the festival, to make us all feel like it is really happening outside of a computer and just to recognize the tradition and sort of the legacy, the place that we feel like the festival plays for like sort of spring in Missoula. Um, and we think people will really be excited to be able to gather uh, safely a little bit and feel like they are part of a bigger community. Um, so one of our concepts is to use projection mapping and to project very large, uh, installations on three different buildings in Missoula over the festival. Um, and this will be approached, um, I've done a lot of public art in Jackson, Wyoming before I moved here in 2018. So I really want to make sure that I'm checking the right boxes and checking in with the right community members and public officials. And this is why I came to you. Um, to use you as sort of a research resource. And hopefully my, my goal would be that you could officially possibly endorse the project. And then I have a list of names that Kathy and Paisley provided me with where I'll write some formal letters that just explain what we're doing and the dates and all the details involved so that the city, it doesn't seem, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't seem that there is actually like a special permit we need to do what we are doing, but we want to make sure that we're approaching it correctly and with everybody's blessings. So um, I was thinking of an informative letter about what we're doing, establishing the fact we have permission from all the private entities that we need to at all the venues and sites. Um, so I can stop there and let you guys take a breath or I can get into some of the details of the three installations if you like. I think you could go ahead with the specifics on the installations unless anybody has any comments or questions. No? Great. Um, so the first one is going to be on Earth Day, which is April 22nd, it's a Thursday. And it will be celebrating the 85th anniversary of the Wildlife Biology Department on campus. And it is also fitting because the Wildlife Film Festival was founded within that department 44 years ago. Um, and so we'll be projecting a short film that's 11 minutes called Lichen on the uh, front of the forestry building on campus. Uh, it, that building has w window shades you can pull down. So there'll be white window shades in all the windows where the film will show up. And then there's sort of brick detail and cute little 
forestry trees in the brick patterning that will still pop out as part of the building. And uh, we'll be rolling that for 11 minutes, have masked reminders and socially distanced reminders and probably a few little festival slides and a happy birthday to the wildlife bio department. And then uh, campus events has approved this. We have some board members that work on campus that are helping us get that established. And there'll be a very specific sort of one-way flow through a um, cleared out parking lot where everybody can view and watch and then enough black to let people walk along. So we're trying to make these events walk along uh, installations. Actually, we're being really careful to not call them events. So pretend I didn't say that word. Um, but what we'd like to do is just encourage people to walk and bike by between the hours of eight and 10 o'clock at night to enjoy these and to sort of be part of the festival. We'll have some merch available and um, probably also some pamphlets that talk about our virtual offerings. And then on the 30th of April, we have permission from First, First Montana State Bank, I think that's the right order. Um, and that is the cool white building downtown on Higgins with the clock um, right across, maybe not right across, but pretty close across from Radius Gallery. And uh, we'll be projecting a short little snippet of uh, it's actually a beautiful sequence that a team of filmmakers made in Yellowstone of a bobcat hunting along the river. Um, there is, the, the bobcat does get a duck at the end of the hunt, but it is not gory and there's no blood and it's not really very, um, totally graph. It's not graph. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, it happens in really white snow. And I think that the sequence will look really lovely on that white building. You know, we like to approach public art and installations like this where it's integrating into the structures and not just like a plop a sculpture on the ground or stick a square of media on a sidewall. So we're kind of looking for a little more artful integration and awareness of what is around us. And then the exciting part about this is we're also gonna project slides announcing the winners of the festival um, categories. So um, we'll have a photographer there that'll take pictures of these large buildings with the slide announcing who the winner is of the best conservation program or something like that. And so I expect a lot of these photos will be going viral or I hope so um, after the awards evening, which is Friday, April 30th. And then our last installation is to close the festival, which is May 14th, Friday. And we have Karis Park reserved and we have a very long, it's actually five hours long. We probably won't even use five hours of it, but we have um, very large 4K media sequence of whales interacting with each other in the ocean and audio. So we'll be playing that, projecting that underneath the pavilion tents so people can kind of come and look up or maybe if they're brave, they could come and lay down on their backs and enjoy the view for a moment, socially distanced. And then we'll have um, speakers set up all around the outside that kind of provides a surround sound of the whales calling to each other, kind of an immersive whale experience along the Clark Fork mm -hmm. to finish us out. And so those are the three installations that we're doing that we'd love you to be like sort of a supporter or partner for. And, um, you know, there's a few nitty gritty details to still figure out, but all the permissions for all the venues and the buildings where the projectors would be are all cleared and, re and ready to go. Wonderful. Oops, I think I muted. Nope, I'm not. Um, Sounds really exciting, Carrie. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. It's certainly given me something to get a little more excited about than just putting some films online again. <laughs> How does everybody feel about supporting the project? <laughs> I like the thumbs up. Um, you know, for some of you last year, or was it two years ago, um, that we worked on a possible projection mapping 
public art campaign that would actually um, take a variety of, um, I guess, use a variety of outlets all the way from um, Stevensville up to Polson. So I think one of the benefits of the project could be that it could be a great learning experience for us um, to be involved at any phase and um, work with Carrie on this and possibly use it for some future projects that we'd like to do. Any, any thoughts on that? No. <laughs> Um, how, will you, how will you use our, you're just going to put our name on the bottom of the list of sponsors or how, how will you use the public art committee? So that is really up to you. You know, I'd love to have you guys as a major, recognized as a major sort of sponsor or partner of the festival. You know, what the minimum that I would be asking is if I can put that in my formal letter to city officials that I'll be sending this week, um, sort of as an endorsement or sort of as a vetted, um, vetted project. Um, you know, maybe the fact that if you guys are following along, maybe we can establish a few check-ins and that just gives the whole project maybe a little bit more like the city officials feel like someone is paying attention to it and therefore they don't need to worry so much about it. Um, you know, it's really to ease minds, but if you guys are, <laughs> I joked, if you guys want to give me money or um, your support or share about the project, any of that kind of thing, I'd love to form an agreement with the committee in that way. Okay, so at the, at the minimal level, you're asking for our endorsement. Yeah. And I think that's what our thumbs up was. Um, is a public art committee endorsement. Um, so then the, the next level up would be if we could um, like uh, post and help share. So just an activity, is that the next? Yeah, I think the next step would be sort of, I think obviously individ as individuals posting would be great. I don't know if you guys have a greater email list or access to something like that through um, the city of Missoula, like I'm new enough that I actually don't know what kind of resources you guys could offer me, but I would take them. <laughs> um, well, Paisley, has, uh, Paisley operates our, our social media. So I think that would be, mm -hmm. you wanna say something about that Paisley? Oh yeah, we could for sure share it on the, the public art committee's social media, but then um, Arts Missoula also admin helps to administer the City of Missoula Public Art Committee, so we can share it on Arts Missoula's social media and also their um, weekly e-news that goes out to a good group of people. Great. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was sure you had already talked to Paisley about um, the Arts Missoula newsletter, which is their information is separate from ours. Um, as far as our email dissemination list, um, in the past um, and every time we've wanted to use it for a quote unquote not non-public art initiated project we have been told that we cannot do that so we tend for those projects to use our social media and our other avenues of marketing okay um, sorry i was a couple minutes late um but are the the three installations that are there completely free and open to the public as a part of this? Okay, I missed that part. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, they are absolutely. Could we have a motion um, if there are no more questions at this point to endorse the project and also market it to the extents that we are able to? officially. Is anyone interested in making that motion? I move to approve. Motion to approve. Oh, wait, we have to make the motion first. Oh, I <laughs> and then that have, we, we have to make the motion, have it endorse and publicize through available channels, International Wildlife Film Festival, Projection Extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tony. Um, do I hear a second? I second. Thanks, Lisa. Um, is there any more discussion? Do we have any money to give them? 
We have money. Um, we, I do not have a final number or any amount from Griffin, who is our contact, as you all know, from the city of Missoula. Um, I think we can entertain a discussion of funding if you all would like. I think we'd have limited funds. Um, so what do you think, Elise? Well, are, aren't there different levels, Carrie, that you offer? Um, I mean, we, we have had very little opportunity to do any public relations this year um, or last year. And this is a pretty fabulous project. Mm -hmm. um, so to have our name associated with it would be nice. But um, how many are, are there? Is it just like a monster list of sponsors that we would... Um, how much boom do we get for our buck? <laughs> well, you know, I think we could figure out a couple things. I think we could figure out, you know, we have levels that are start at 250 and go to 500, but it w does turn into a little bit of logo soup. And so um, I think that, you know, we could look at that, but we could also look as just highlighting you guys as a, a supporter and putting your name particularly on those installations in a, in a sort of more customized way. And maybe that looks like um, printing support or marketing, marketing support. Um, I know that in the past I've worked out really nice agreements with Arts Missoula where, um, you know, they print a bunch of posters or pamphlets and also disseminate them that themselves, which takes a little money on their part, but um, is really huge and helpful to us. I mean, I'm, I will always ask for a little money, but to be honest, like, you know, your support and working towards something like this and maybe working towards something that happens every year, um, you know, I'd be more interested in a long-term meaningful relationship. I don't want to take resources that should go to artists. <laughs> so, um, Carrie, one of the things you mentioned in our earlier discussions was Anne um, was going to be doing the artistic footprints you wanted people to follow. Do you want to talk about that? And you thought maybe there was a way we could financially contribute to that? Yeah, you know, this, uh, this started uh, Sideways Gaze, and I should know Anne's last name, but I'm sure you guys all do. Um, she paints on all the windows Park. around town. Um, she Park. Gonna, Park, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And she did, she's done two signal boxes for us, everyone. If, mm. So she did the honeybees, which we just did last year. And then the piece over by H and H meets, which I am forgetting the name. Um, so Anne and I had a cool plan and um, a lot of it involved glow in the dark, uh, chalk and directionals on the parking lot, a parking lot and on the streets near the installations, mostly for um, flow and identifying IWFF and also, you know, just for like COVID safe logistics. Um, since then, we have figured out that there actually is not anything like glow in the dark chalk that exists. And between rain and toxicity, um, we're we're pulling back on that plan a little bit. Um, I think we're talking a little bit about maybe hanging some signs in the air off some trees around those installations, you know, just ways that we can communicate, identify support supporters, and mostly um, make sure that we can communicate safety concerns. So that is a little up in the air. I thought it was going to be a big factor. It sounds to me like at campus for the forestry event, the event staff wants to just use glow tape and lay it out themselves and make sure it's just really clear. So I let my artistic um, need to control that uh, glow <laughs> a little bit, but um, but you know we're still you know how these projects go they're ever evolving and and if something like that was of interest, um, it would be good to know. I should tell you, um, if you're working on campus, um, when I was teaching over there, I did a poetry advocacy project and we hung poems from trees, just from strings from trees, and we got in a bunch of trouble for it. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it was apparently littering and damaging trees. And 
I mean, and you did a big mea culpa. <laughs> strings with poems on it. And it was as if we had taken an ax to it. <laughs> I, I have one more question. Um, so I have a, two kids and usually they go on a field trip to the International Wildlife Field Festival. And so I was curious if there is a, like a youth engagement component this year in the COVID reality. And um, I guess my second question is if, if you're coordinating with MCPS to let them know about these outdoors um, events, because I could see this being something, especially like the whales, something that families, you know, go do um, in the evening, so. Yeah, um, we are have a slew of family-friendly films, which will be identifying and offering education sort of components on to them sort of on the virtual aspect so you can kind of take a deeper dive when you're there watching the film with your kids. Um, we normally do field trips, youth matinees at the Denison Theater and we just decided that there wasn't a good replacement. Um, I spent a lot of time working on a children's film festival supported by Arts Missoula actually called Kidomatic in the fall and we did a lot of work with Spark and we had good engagement, but not astounding. And, and my experience right now is the teachers have like it's just so much in their heads and going on that working um, really meaningfully on, um, on programs seemed like a little difficult this year. So we're letting that piece go besides the educational pieces. Um, we've also, we were going to try to do a costume parade, but I just felt like we were pushing it a little bit. So we're going to do a video of a tribute to the wild walk of past archival footage that we'll be playing online. There will be kid stuff. I'll make sure I contact Spark and teachers and all kinds of people. So we do get the word about, out about the installations and the family programming, but, um, that is the, the like education aspect of this festival is a, a losing a little bit this year for sure Heidi. Darn that COVID. I know. So do we have the motion then on the floor do we want to amend it to allow for some funding or have it go as is in supporting an, the festival in an endorsement and marketing a non-financial way? Um, any more discussion on that? Well, I'd like to see um, if we could we could um, formalize a little of the trade. Um, if you said mm -hmm. that you wanted to to trade, um, what did you say? Some language, formalized language at the point of the um, installations. Um, so, what what would we do in return for that? I mean, we could do our social media. Um, I could throw in radiuses too <laughs> as, a, as a bonus. Um, and what else would what else would you like? What else could we do for you? You know, I don't really know how this committee works. So I I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I think that um, going back and forth after I touch base with these city officials, you know, if there's questions or problems, I think, you know, some consulting and advisement and some possible um, reference letters or something um, might be really, really um, essential and important for us. So, or, you know, I've also never done a public art project with um, in Missoula. So this will be a new, new learning opportunity for me but you know just being given a few of the names Kathy and Paisley sort of mentioned to talk to Parks and Rec and to um, Ellen Leahy and some others that I do have written down um, and so I think depending on how that process goes um, and any advisement like maybe I even send a letter to one of you that can just kind of look at it and tell me if, oh, you should not say that or, oh, you should say that. Um, you know, a little advisement on this introduction so I can slip it through the city um, without a lot of trouble would be the most helpful. <laughs> Do you think a proactive letter of endorsement would? Sure, that would be great. 
Okay. I can draft that. Thank you, Lisa. Great, Lisa, if you do that and then send it to me. Uh-huh. That'd be great. And where will I find, I took sloppy notes. Where will I find all the details of this carrier? I can I, send, I guess I don't need them all, do I? No, I can send a really, an, dates and some sites and some specifics right now, actually. I'll just reply to this group chain. Okay. And when you send the post out to Paisley, um, include me on that email. Actually, maybe Paisley send it out to all of us and we can, because I know Stoney's got a good network as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the, how, how are your other networks? <laughs> um, that we could get it out into other arts networks as well. That'd be great. That'd be great. So as it stands, we'll do the endorsement and Lisa will do a draft letter. And we will also use all of, as Stoney said, all of our ways of dissemination and again, through the public art committee, but um, again, generally just encouraging anyone to use all of their social media outlets to do that. Um, Let's call for the question. So, um, and again, this with no financial support at this point. Um, so all in favor? Aye. Raise your hands. Aye. You're in favor? Aye. Yay. Opposed? Motion is carried. Carrie, thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys. It's, it's so an nice exciting project, I think. Um, and I think it could offer opportunities for the future. Good. I hope so. We'll we'll keep it going. Um, yeah. I really appreciate the time. Thank you, guys. Thanks, oh. Gary. Yeah. Well, you are welcome to stay on with us if you would like. Um, but we're gonna we will continue with our agenda. And the next exciting piece is to introduce our um, two new members. One of whom is with us. Um, we, as all of you know, we lost um, Courtney and Haley. So the city council appointed Greg Twig. Um, he is um, at the university. He is not with us today. He will um, be officially, oh, I'm sorry, city council um, appointed James and Greg Twig was appointed by the mayor. I said that wrong. So James is with us, James Walter. Um, James, you can wave hello. Um, and I, in James, will be official as soon as he takes his oath of office. So, but we still, um, he was invited to participate in today's meeting. Um, and James, you wanna give us a little background of yourself? Uh, yes, a short background is <laughs> I am professionally uh, a metal fabricator and do all types of uh, metal construction uh, from art to uh, completely functional, practical pieces of work. And I also have a, a recent experience as an advocate for bicycle pedestrian infrastructure in the city. So I'm very encouraged and um, interested in getting engaged with the public art committee as it pertains to our outdoor public spaces. James, did you do those, did you paint those uh, roundabout um, segments like um out of wood i did i'm a i manufactured the boxes for the city and oh. um helped organize the installation and the planning and so kind of a whole um uh, full support system for that nice. um you're, you're my neighbor I, so I, I saw them in your front your your zone i love it <laughs> That's exciting. They're, they're pretty, they're pretty colorful. James, I think we're simple. neighbors too. <laughs> now that I know that, I think we're neighbors. <laughs> Paisley, Good you're heavens. over here too. Awesome. Yeah. Off a of park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, it, it's very exciting to have um, James and um, and as I said, we will have um, Greg Twig join us. A media arts professor at the university. So um, as he will be formally approved on March 9th. So hopefully can be at our next meeting. Great, welcome. Very, 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 very exciting. So 
Um, anybody have any questions for James other than the boxes? <laughs> Perfect. Um, next item on our agenda, and I, Stoney, I guess if uh, welcome to Missoula aspect. And last month we had said that we would back away from the project and let the downtown partnership handle it. Um, but what I didn't see and couldn't remember from the minutes was our, were you gonna write a letter to them, Stoney? Uh, Dunn did, yes. I, I sent a message out confirming mm -hmm. our um, uh, kind of moving away from that project at this time. And so I think it, it basically kind of moves back into limbo for, for the next eager um, party. Um, also, since I'm, since this is where my name is on, um, and I know that this is not the agenda item, but it wasn't put on there. Also the Engel and Volks, the mural downtown, I see wasn't on our agenda item. Sorry, I didn't check. I should have looked at our agenda before the meeting. Um, but I also followed up with them and they right now are working with Gigglebox maybe to execute the project. So for now, we're, um, we're also tabling that one. Paisley, let's remember to put that on our agenda for next week. And we can actually take off then. Welcome to Missoula. I, I think you can take off both for now is the sense oh, really? I have. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, I, I told Tom that if, if they wanted our support to reach out, um, but but I get the sense that they are they are moving forward with, with the giggle box folks. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. Um, and I made a faux pas. Um, because I was so excited to introduce James that I went by approval of a min the minutes. So if we could go back to agenda item number three, January minutes. Did anyone have any corrections or additions to the minutes? Did you all have a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. I motion for approval of the January minutes. Oh, thanks, Lise. A second. Perfect. All in favor? Opposed? I'm in favor too. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back um, to our next agenda item um, the Indigenous Mural Project, Lisa and Danny. Still have not heard a word. I heard that um, they were postponing it because. Um, uh, the bridge construction was occupying a lot of that space, um, but I don't know. I mean, I also heard that other rumor that it was um, being canceled because the they just didn't really like working with um, civilians. <laughs> um, who's the? Can I ask who they is? I'm. I'm. You know, I wasn't invited to the meeting where this happened. So I've really only heard oh. it in scraps of oh. rumor, but um, it was a meeting between Ellen um, Buchanan and um, um, who runs MDA? Linda McCarthy. Linda McCarthy. Um, and a few other people like that with maybe one, and Karen Sippy was in that and maybe one or two of the engineers. And they had just, um, there was someone who had come to one of the last meetings and had just made all these requests, like we need water, we need um, all these requests of um, Northwestern, uh -huh. which didn't represent us at all. We were just sitting there silently going, who is this woman? She came to one meeting, mm -hmm. um, but she really frustrated all the engineers and everything. And after that, it just kind of started spiraling downhill. So I don't, I don't know what really happened. And then I heard oh, that, well, it was just postponed because of the bridge. I don't really know what the story is. I suppose I should get on Linda McCarthy and get an answer. Um, I'll, I'll try so to- this is, So that's your whole, I mean, like the mural project that was your pride and joy and yours and Danny's and that you've been working on it, kind of the whole project is tabled. Am I missing it or is that? That is what the rumor is that um, they got oh. frustrated with the level of requests, um, mostly by this one person. Um, oh my gosh. And it was the oh. same, it was the same woman who, um, was involved in the dog project thing that 
that caused a lot of issues. Um, anyway, it was, I don't, that, I, that's what I heard. It's so, well, I'm, it's hardly a report. <laughs> no, but I'm so disappointed. I mean, I just, that is, I mean, I, I think most of us could see the completion of that project and it, it was such a stellar project. I know. Um, so do you, would you like us to put this on the agenda next month and may, and find more detail or, or are you? Yes, I promise or before, February, before March, I will ask Linda McCarthy for an update. Okay, we lost Danny. So I, I don't know what happened there. She said she had to go. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah, she's okay. testifying and keeps getting called out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm disappointed because that was an amazing. You know, when when the one thing Karen Sippy did say to me when she was telling me about this um, was that Linda had turned to her and said, tell Lisa that we'll make this project happen somehow, even if it's not this place. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, then I have an idea at the end of the meeting, but it's not on the agenda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'll get I'll get a proper response. I was okay. too I was too frustrated and in mourning to actually ask for someone, lest my head explode while talking to them. Well, in any way, shape, or form, if I can help, Lisa. I mean, I truly I just didn't want to have too many cooks in the pot when you were working on it. But I it is an amazing project. It could it it could just be killer. I know. Once executed, so. Um, for James's benefit, can you give like a three second and for Carrie's kind of overview of what the your initial idea was? Okay, but it's going to make you cry. I, okay. <laughs> um, but I'll go ahead with it. So it was a project. There's a um, the substation, the electrical substation that's down by the library um, and Karis Park on that side of things. So they were putting a big wall around there, um, Northwest Energy. And they were, um, and it was the opportunity to involve a large public art project. And they had done similar projects that cost millions of dollars in Bozeman and Helena. And um, we were working with them to create, to make this all an indigenous education project pretty much. So to have all the um, tribes represented, artists from those tribes, and it was just beautiful. <laughs> I have pictures. <laughs> and then it, it was going all along very well. Um, and then it just seems like right, at, right as I was getting nervous because it was all people talking and we were hearing very little from the engineers, um, which after three or four meetings, I was getting nervous about that. And then there was this private meeting that I wasn't invited to where it just seemed to disappear or the rug got pulled out from under us. And, and they said that they would, um, you know, it was just like, we're taking a break at Christmas, but there's been, so I was sort of taking them on their word and seeing if it would come up again, but it hasn't and it's mid February now. So that's why I'm going to have to go seek answers. Um, well, thanks for all your work on it. And thank Danny, um, thanks Danny for all of her work on it and Courtney's past work on it and anyone else, um, cause it is a dynamite project. Yeah. I hope it still works somewhere. And if Karen is seriously thinks that it can be done, um, maybe once you find out the details, maybe there is another avenue where it comes to fruition. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, the master plan calls for big art and it also calls for, and a lot of what was happening, what's going on with the park and trails system down in um, Karis Park is a lot of indigenous um, engagement like um, an education project. So this fit right in. So um, it's, it, it'll still fit somewhere. We'll just, we might have to do it in, in steps rather mm -hmm. than in major spot. Okay. Well, we, yeah, as I said, great idea. So let's keep it in the backs of our minds and uh, as much as we can. Um, Dennis, would you like to talk about Dash? And I, they're very, I don't, I know you had a chance to talk to Michael a little bit, but um, would you like to update us on that? 
Yeah, that's uh, going to be a really exciting project uh, with Mike Lutzig, I think is his last name, and uh, from Denver, and uh, just some incredible uh, sculptures that he does. Um, I think I sent a link to some of the uh, websites that have some of his work on it. And uh, if you don't have those, I can, I can resend those. Um, and uh, he was going to come down, I guess, originally in March. And he's doing a big installation there in Denver in March and won't be available until uh, probably into April sometime, maybe, maybe even towards the end of April, which would be nice because then it's better weather anyway. So, and then, uh, and then we were just going to go around town and uh, uh, meet him and uh, uh, just see different places to where uh, the sculpture might be appropriate. And uh, so we'll do that then. And then, uh, and just be a good uh, thing, I think, to uh, be involved with the uh, Dash uh, organization. Um, and they're uh, in different organizations all over the country. And I think it'd be, uh, he has chosen Missoula as one of his uh, places that he wants to uh, do one of his sculptures. So I think, I think it's a very exciting project and uh, be uh, looking forward to it. Dennis, these were the glass and metal sculptures, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a list of sites that you're gonna take him to or that he's that he's aware of or um I have I have some uh links to some sites that has his work on it. Oh no no I meant um here in Missoula. Do you have specific places in Missoula that are on your list to show him? You know, he um, has some... Oh, go oh, ahead, yeah, Dennis, sorry. Uh we haven't really uh, uh, had too many thoughts on that. Um, one thought I had was maybe by the library, but um, I, I'm I'm not sure how that would that would work out there. But that might be one one idea. Um, I know they have a lot of sculptures, uh, you know, like for say at the university uh, area over there that students have done. Um, and uh, lots of different art projects around town. Um, but I, I think sculpture would be very, very exciting to see and uh, be very open to any suggestions that anybody might have as to um, a spot to maybe uh, put one of these. But yeah, it's a good idea to maybe get some ideas ahead of time from people to uh -huh see uh, where they thought something like this might be appropriate. Yeah, because that's a, that's a lot of ground to cover if he's only going to be here a day. And then I, I guess my other question is, does it have to be on publicly owned property? It de doesn't necessarily. We could, I mean, if there's a dynamite space and it offers an opportunity for public-private partnership, um, we, there would just be some additional negotiations there and we it's not like we haven't done those before and can't can't work on those um, when he, you know it was interesting because in our very first phone call with him too he was kind of working on sketches and he he was I think I mean we haven't received anything yet um, some of his work he might when he does those he might have a request that would be sort of site specific as much as it can be where that piece may relate to that site. Um, but we don't know that yet because he's been pretty busy and I, we haven't had a huge amount of inter interaction with him. Um, but I, I think right now, if anybody has any good ideas, um, maybe spearhead them to Dennis and we can work with that. Um, and, and talk to him about those locations. And I think if you have some private locations um, if, that are prom in prominent public view, I think there's an opportunity there. 
Yeah, I was just more trying to come up with places that were covered because I remember us, uh, Dennis saying a while ago that he was a little nervous about the winter weather um, and interacting with the sculptures. So, um, like the bridge over Reserve Street is covered and could be potentially cool or like the north side overpass or some of the bigger pavilions mm -hmm. in the parks but that's all i had yeah well <laughs> so no and that and then that would uh, that would account for a public public private or public public partnership because yeah. those are all mdt and you know they might be interested in something like that um but that what's cool about that is just the whole the breadth of gee where really could it go where that piece could be protected and covered yeah so i think we should perfect. i'll send some ideas to dennis but i feel like we should have a list of places mm -hmm. that and i yeah. think i think we might need a list of the specs before mm -hmm. we can come up with places so maybe we can ask him do you think mm -hmm. i mean you said he was making some sketches so he might not be ready to to say how big it's going to be but i mean that's going to be the first question mda has well how big is it and if we well and i think the bridges are um yeah. actually owned by um Oh, and managed by Parks and Rec, even though they're over, you know, like the overpasses over mm. Reserve Street, uh, it's still a city infrastructure and the overpass over to the north side, uh, not the underpass, but the pedestrian one. Um, oh, you're, oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood, Heidi, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, but that's the Parks and Rec, you know, mm -hmm. they maintain right. it. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to know if he's like, Planning. I just looked at his pictures and some of them were hanging and some of them were, so who knows. Yeah, and he has their interior building spaces, exterior building. And so um, I think um, once he gives us and maybe Dennis, next time we talk to him, you can we can encourage him to um, see where he is on his drawings and then give us some specs maybe and um, ideas of well, specifications of size and materials and da 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 da. I'm, I might be wrong in that we need the specs before the place. Maybe he's waiting for us to give him the place before he comes up with the specs. And I mean, but I don't know which is the cart and which is the horse. Yeah. At this point. He, you know, he was really excited about coming to Missoula to try and find the place. Um, he had this idea in his mind. And once he gets here, I'm, I, you know, we were both, Dennis and I were thinking maybe he'll change his mind on even what the piece would be. So really all we know about it is that it's gotta be protected and, it, and it's big. <laughs> Theoretically, it's um, yeah. he's got 15,000 to work with. Am I remembering that correctly, Dennis? Yeah, yeah somewhere in that range, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. well, we'll, try, be, yeah. we'll try and get some more detail from him. But in the meantime, I think too, if, um, if you think of public spaces that are out there that where we could use some public art um, throughout the Missoula community, um, not not just in our urban downtown, um, you know, when you're driving around, kind of you kind of look and see what you think. I'm sorry, Lisa, you were going to say something too. No. Nope. Okay. Cool. Anything else, Dan? Dennis? Anything else? uh yeah we'll just we'll just have to uh see what is what his specs might be and uh what type of protection if he wants any that would be required but it's about bad all i can think of cool cool well you all will notice signal boxes are back on the agenda we've got a few left um and some replacement boxes. Um, the I've been working with the Grant Creek neighborhood to replace theirs. And I think I might've mentioned this in the past. They would, uh, both of the um, signal boxes, Lillian's and Carrie Malia Arvish's that were replaced um, with quote, new boxes. Um, Grant Creek would like to see those sa that same imagery restored on the boxes. Uh, both artists are, um, ex interested and willing to work with us on that or and work with them on that. So that's very exciting. Um, and there's a new box in their neighborhood. So um, 
I am working with them on proposals, funding proposals for boxes. Um, Dennis and I were also working on raising some private monies for some additional boxes and also the other neighbor with the other neighborhoods for um, the re few remaining boxes in their neighborhoods, which is exciting. Um, this is something though for everybody to keep their um, neighbors and organizations informed. The Normally the neighborhoods would go to their um, the city for the neighborhood grants situation, but with COVID that was all delayed. So now the funding cycle will start on March 8th and run through June 9th. Um, so a little later than what we're used to. And it theoretically, if these boxes are funded, because that's, for example, the neighborhoods I'm working with thus far, the funding cycle they obviously will work with it will, it shouldn't push back if we kind of keep to our same schedule and having boxes done at the end of August, shouldn't impact that schedule if they are selected. If their, um, their grants are not selected, then of course um, they'll work for other avenues on raising those monies because they do wanna see at least those, those boxes replaced. Um, there has been um, some suggestions, and Lisa, you did it in the past too, that with the new restrictions of the city where we, you all remember last year where we actually had an in-person meeting, um, we can't do those. So it might be, um, this might be the year that we actually do, and Dennis and I talked about this, maybe selecting artists ahead of time and just for maybe just this year or whatever, depending on how it works, commissioning artists to do, you know, select some artists and commissioning them to do boxes this year. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, we yeah. have so many artists that, who just narrowly missed mm -hmm. being chosen and, and they're terrific and we already know what it would look like. And mm -hmm. I mean, rather than bringing, I mean, it can be a frustrating process for people um yeah. so just well, give someone a chance yeah and, I, and again not every public art call is for everybody and we have you know that's why we try to do as many as we can or a variety of what we can so um and and we some artists who are more established in the community um have offered to do it so i, I you know more to come on this and, and Dennis and I, and if anybody wants to join us at a subcommittee meeting or meeting um, to talk about it, um, I think the door is open on some of that, but. Um, I think an invitation is on COVID, I just think it might be simpler to do some replacements or maybe even do half and half. I don't know, we, we can talk about that, but. Well, I, I mean, the pandemic gives us a year to just do something different. Yep, it's exactly. A to do something different. Mm -hmm. So I why just don't want. I mean, we're a new committee again um, because there's been so much turnover. We have lots well, of projects. Um, I, I mean, the the call is such a lot of work, and I mean, if we just bypass that and did some invitations this year, there's it, it would be streamlined and make okay. the day of some people if they would be selected. I mean, that's the whole other issue. Um, so, I mean, there's a variety of reasons why people are selected and there's a variety why they're not. So, um, but it's, I think it's open for discussion and this is a good year to maybe do an invitational or a blend. Um, and though, you know, Dennis and I have talked about the whole gamut. So um, more to come on that, but we, um, we'll have more information for you next month and um, really um, welcome any input on that. Because I tell you, it's tough not having in-person meetings. <laughs> and, and if we can't, you know, it's hard. You know, one of the reasons we decided to do the selections last year in person and outside in Karis Park 
um, was that we could socially distance and do all of those things. And we thought we were being appropriate, but apparently we weren't. So we'll, we'll go take a step back and look at all of that again. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the mountain lion mural. Moving forward, um, Paisley and I have been working with Shanti on the helping them with the contract. Um, it is still, they're still planning to have that contract executed um, on the 15th. So, um, and the, they've accepted the imagery. Um, and so just fine tuning the contract, we made some suggestions to their agreement. Obviously the agreement is with um, Missoula Urban Transportation District and the artist with our assistance. So their attorneys have the final say, but um, best case scenario that the artwork, it'll be started on March 15th or within that time period and completed by April 30th. So it's, it's a, a great exciting project. And I, um, Paisley, could you, do we have easy access to the artwork to everybody in case they haven't, don't remember um, it? <clears throat> yeah, give me just a minute and I should be able to find that. There was also just today, Stella reached out for a possible deadline extension. Um, she's in Bozeman currently um, and her family's hoping she can stay there until April 1st. So it may get pushed back by oh, a couple cool. weeks, but yeah, let me see if I can find that. Give me just a second. Yeah. Thanks. I missed that, but it's, you know, again, it's, it's going to be a, another great addition, I think, to Missoula and, and the transfer center. It's going to make that building pop. All right, I think I've got it here for yeah. us. Yeah. And I believe this is the selected one. Yeah. I would have to confirm it. Either this one no. or the colors of the mountains and the sky at the bottom might be very slightly different, but I think this was the selected one. Okay. I guess I was thinking it was the one with the mountain lion on it. Am I missing it? Oh, there's three different animals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Courtney for starting all of that um, and, and working with Mountain Lion. Um, you know, they've, they've been pretty supportive of public art over the years. So um, hopefully they will continue to do so. Um, next, annual planning meeting. Um, we had talked about waiting until we have some new members, which we do. Um, Stoney suggested last month we do it in May, which we could. Um, how does everybody feel about that? Um, that? Would May be convenient to do a planning meeting? Do, would we like it during our regular meeting? Would we like to take a Saturday morning? Um, would we... Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. So I haven't participated in a planning meeting yet. Can you explain like how it's different from a regular meeting? Um, well, <laughs> what, actually, what, we, yeah. what we've done is we've, we've kind of looked at where we've been and where we can go. Um, and on the back of all of our agenda, and, and this is so old, was like our one year, two year, three year plan of projects. Um, Lisa last year suggested um, and we worked with, if we had a specific amount of money, what would we like to do if we had a large amount of money? And Lise, correct me on those sums because I don't remember. Um, what would we like to was, do? It was 3000 and 15000 So if, mm -hmm. you had, if you had a $3,000 project, what would it be? And then what, if you had a $15,000 project, what would that be? And then just um, go around the room and talk about those I don't think, I mean, I think all we did was the one so mm -hmm. far. Um, um, and, and the ones that I think on our agenda, I, you know, the other part in the past when we've had planning meetings, we have had a moderator who's worked with us on, on that. So everybody gets to participate and 
um, at that equal level and, you know, the whole no idea is a bad idea. Um, and we could do that. Um, we could have someone help us with that. Um, I don't think we've had a moderator for the last two years. Prior to that, we have those. I just said in the past we have had okay. moderators. So we haven't for the last two years because it's, it's been more of a, yeah, um, well, general meeting about da da da. Um, so I, you know, we could have someone come in and work with us and lead us in a, in discussions about where we see the public art committee going in a um, short term, long term range. I like the idea of having it moderated if if for anything that whoever is chairing, if it's you, Kathy, you know, gets to participate more fully, I think if they're not trying to have to keep track of everything. Mm -hmm. um, How does everybody else? I mean, last year we asked, we were asked Kia, I think, in the year before. She was not available because she was so involved. Um, but I think we could find someone if we all feel like that would be a good thing. I think um, Kia asked for a stipend and we weren't mm -hmm. willing to pay it, maybe. I think that was. Um, oh, that's silly. Um, no, well, maybe not. Maybe not. We don't know how much my. I think part of the reason is we have not seriously had a financial report, which I've been trying to get for the last um, yeah. uh, for a very long time. Um, but we'll see. Um, I do think personally, um, and it wouldn't be out of line to pay someone to moderate for a couple hours. So, um, well, Kia would be great. So why don't why don't we um can i unofficially because this isn't a vote but does anybody have any negatives against having a moderator or having someone outside of the public art committee work with us okay we like that <laughs> um if anyone has any suggestions other than kia maybe what you could email me or e and um I can talk to those people and get some backgrounds and then just report back next month and, and we'll have it on our agenda and we could make a decision maybe. That'd be cool. I mean, I guess, I guess our moderator should be a little bit informed by our objectives and what we're trying to get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so maybe we should think about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good input, Sony. That's great because that. I mean, obviously, prior to doing anything, we'd want them to be able to understand as much as they can, where pseudo where we've been, um, even looking at some of our past goals, et cetera, and um, and also have members communicate as to what they'd like to see come out of it as well. So yeah. So we just hired a moderator to help us through, I guess, strategic planning and bylaw uh, finalization for the local food policy council. Mm -hmm. And we actually drew up, you know, a on the front end, very clear expectations. Um, you know, I guess we gave her a list of expectations and then she drew up a proposal of how she was going to meet them. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked pretty well. Yeah, we did, I'm on the Open Aid Alliance board and we've done that, um, well, every year for the past years and it, it, it does, it, it seems to work well and it, it just focuses us all on really what we want as a committee for past, present and future and specifics to general and, and allows us to all wrap our arms around all of those things. So, um, Should we, should someone start to draft this then from the... Um, I wonder I'm happy to, oh go ahead oh sorry Kathy um I mean I guess I wonder a little bit if like there should be um kind of a maybe an input period where maybe we have a survey or something and we collect um feedback from all of our members um so all voices are heard mm -hmm. and we can identify um maybe areas that 
our kind of weak spots, strengths, whatever, we can kind of get a little bit of a lay of the land and that can kind of point us with the limited time we have available, what we want to focus on and the strengths that we, we need to bring in to help support the committee. Do you, would you like to work with me and I'd be happy to work with you on putting something together like that? Yeah, I, we can, we can do that, Kathy. That sounds good. Perfect. That sounds marvelous. Thank you. Um, this kind of is, goes along with that committee list, member list, status, et cetera. Um, and I might throw this out to Dennis because this is something he asked me about. Um, but in, in Dennis, maybe, I don't know if you wanna throw in and I'll just kind of start out and then you can contribute um, or finish up. But maybe on um, the back of our minutes, putting some sort of list as who, um, what the committee members are, who's on the committees and a status. And I know we have a, um, you know, we have our minutes and generally the committees all report, but there are some committees that don't report at that time, et cetera. Um, and so it would be, we, we, and I haven't seen a full committee list for a very long time. So I was thinking that it was a great idea. Do you wanna talk, Dennis? Uh, yeah, I, I noticed, uh, it looks like we have a couple of different websites, the uh, one with the city and then one with the public art committee which is somewhat out of date and it, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's out of date. And so if, if we could get that maybe up to date. Uh, well, that was updated, Paisley updated some of, you know, the stuff that you find, but we can always look at that for more. So that's good. Yeah. And, uh, and just a, a, a list of all the uh, different projects and the progress that's being made on each each project just have an ongoing uh, list so that everybody knows everything what's going on. Uh, I thought that might help. Mm -hmm. And is that list um, on our agenda or? What you uh, the, the list, yeah, it would just be all the uh, projects and who's involved with each project and the committee members and uh, the progress that, that's being made on each of the projects. And are you proposing a way of showing that to us? I'm not, I'm not quite understanding. Like I, I get that there should be lists, but how do we see them? Or is this up for discussion on the next agenda or? Yeah, to me, it, it, seemed, it would be really easy to put like this, the subcommittee lists in the agenda. Showing pro progress for each project, though, I think might get a little hairy um, to have that ongoing somewhere that's accessible to everybody. But it wouldn't be difficult to do like a couple columns of what's the who's the project, who's on that subcommittee. And, and, and then just have the verbal report. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. yeah, and even some of the, you know, when we like for example, sometimes we have committees that'll start and stop during the year, but at least knowing that we have a standing committee, so to speak, and who, who would be participating in that. You know, um, just given that we've lost a lot of people in the last year, there's been so much turnover on, in the last two years on this committee, maybe we ought to just um, like do a reset of what the structure is of the committee and I mean, I don't, if I read all that, it was a couple of years ago and you just don't see it again. Um, so maybe there's a way we could revisit um, the, the committee structures and, and all that. Is, that. is that partly what you're trying to do here with these? Is there other uh -huh. stuff? No, just, I'm, well, Dennis, I may, well, correct me if I'm wrong, I because you were just not, and truly, it's simple. It, it, you were just not aware of who was on what committees and who was doing what. And I, am I wrong? And let, for example, our website, I mean, that the completely different thing that the, our own publicart.org website had, still had members on it with Peter Lambros as the chair, which has been a while. <laughs> so those types of things 
Um, but I don't, just to even know that we have committees working on certain projects. Like I don't, on our minutes, we have indigenous people projects. So this is what I was interpreting, Dennis, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I, and, and I know that it's you and Danny, but I didn't know who else was on that committee, frankly, or I don't know that the public knew and maybe, um, you know, I just think if we have subcommittees, this that is ideal was a good thing that we just have someplace um, somewhere where we know and can see who's on the various committees, subcommittees that we have. So more informational than anything. And help me, Dennis, there. I don't know. Is that what you were saying? Am I misinterpreting? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just some kind of uh a list of, of, mm -hmm. of the committees of all, of all the projects and progress in the main mm -hmm. project. Yeah. Uh, for example, the, the traffic box project and how many, uh, how many of those are available and who's on the committee and what, mm -hmm. uh, what stage we're at with that and uh, what, what considerations we might have with uh, choosing uh, Maybe a well-known artist from Missoula, or um, or a competition for that, as we've done in the past. Um, yeah, just just yeah, just some kind of a a list of of what kind of is going on. Mm -hmm. Well, in good background, and I think it might be helpful to to James and Greg too, just to see what types of committees are available and who could part, you know, so um, a general list. So any, any comment on that or? Well, we'll work on that. And then um, maybe Dennis, you wanna, you can bring it forth next month. Okay. Okay, well, the ball's in your court, sir. <laughs> Um, announcements, news, or upcoming events. Does anybody have anything? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we have a call for artists right now for open air. So, um, the call right now is open for, um, Montana based artists. We have all of our out of state artists selected and, um, the artists opportunities are for, uh, four to five week residencies over the course of the summer and the fall, um, interdisciplinary across disciplines um, and applications. Well, eventually will be extended to March 15th, but it's not public yet. So, but, but there's a little time still left. So spread the word and um, should be another good, good season. Do we have that on our website? And do we can, did we put that on social media? Those things. And again, I'm, I apologize because I've been out of that loop. Um, I've shared it to social media on Arts Missoula and Public Art, but I didn't put it on our website. Typically, oh. we only put our art calls on our website. Yeah. 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 So I thought so, but, you know, just it's always good to double check. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I just have a question. I, I was trying to, I, I guess I accidentally clicked out of our agenda, but were we going to cut, did we talk about the chair position is that are you kind of filling that in perpetuity Kathy what's the no. process for us <laughs> no I am not filling it in perpetuity. <laughs> okay. um, we do have elections generally in July um, and um, if we would like if the committee would like to select a chair or vote vote on a chair um, that name can be put forward and people can vote on that and that chair person will be chair from this point on or that point on. Does, does that person have to consent before being voted for? <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there, it's standard. I mean, again, Robert rules of order or in, um, procedures, or if there are more than one, um, more than one individual would like to be chair, um, that would be fine. And I would be happy to retreat to vice chair or I can um, hold it until July if people would so want. And um, that would give our new members a time to get to know the committee in case either of them would want to be chair or if 
someone is too busy now to be the chair and would want to take over on July 1st. Um, the door so is wide open. <laughs> so I know that um, during our council appointment process, we definitely um, discussed uh, that the art committee needs someone to step into the role of a chair, um, just based on conversations um, from the last couple of meetings. And so um, when we appointed James, we were hoping maybe that he would be willing to eventually fill that role just because of the, um, like we were really impressed with his ability to really pull together projects and make them happen and um, work with different groups of people to get things done. So I'll just put that out there that we definitely That's where have. we start chanting James, 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 yeah. James. Of course he has to consent, I understand. Uh, but it was definitely something we considered. Um, yeah. James, how do you feel about this? I, <clears throat> well, first, thank you for uh, allowing me to be a part of this. And I, I would like to learn a little bit about the about one month. Committee. <laughs> sure, let's uh, see. Let's let's review. Let's review this again at a later date. <laughs> okay. Oh, and we have to have elections on the agenda too. We can't just. <laughs> we gotta, yeah, and yeah. I think they're tagged <laughs> Jane for. It, so well, we haven't talked with Greg yet. <laughs> Yeah, I w uh, just thinking about that. Uh, sorry, it just came to my mind, but I'm just going to throw it out there of, of, yeah, having the elections on the calendar, having a calendar for the public art committee. I, I'm not aware of one that we have, but I think that would help kind of give us a sense of grounding and anticipate when we can expect to review financials and um, when we do our annual planning. You know, I just think that maybe this is a good opportunity for us to kind of do a little bit of our, our um, you know, bones, uh, governance kind of um, components of, of this work. And it is challenging because there is turnover and you do have to refresh things, but I think that should be kind of factored into our calendar as well. Yeah, and and I think, um, again, I'm, I'm just referring back to history. Um, I believe we, there might be something in our my notebook um, that we could make more um, digital and user friendly, so that it, and and accessible. Um, you know, and it's how many people? Just out of curiosity, how many people like go to our do Google Docs to get information? Because um, I know Paisley's been working on that, and we have, I mean, from our first coordinator through Paisley things have been stored there and that w it was the, for the idea that we would have a repository for resources. And so I, you know, maybe, um, you know, one thing for everybody to, to look at that, but I, but to maybe look at that and see what we have that we could make it be more apparent and accessible if, and I maybe I don't know maybe Google Docs is accessible and everybody's feels good about using it but that was supposed you know at one point um, the committee made the decision that that's where we would you that's what we would use for our information and go to for calendars and dates and this and that and um, you know if we're not updating it that's not good but how do we make that how do we make that one place if that's it or a place accessible for all of us and usable for all of us if it's not going to be that i mean i think one thing you could probably do is even just very simply um add a link to the drive or a link a link to certain documents maybe that shows up in our agenda or something like a document that's we're constantly referencing mm -hmm. um so that would be something easy for Paisley to, you know, just drop that link, you know, I don't know, wherever in there. And then that way, as we're thinking and talking about these things, we can pull it up at the ready. Google, mm -hmm. for people who use Google pretty readily is accessible, but I think it can be, there can be a little bit of a barrier if you're mm -hmm. not familiar with it. 
So, no, I I agree, um, and I will. I have to be the first that I always have to go back and look at one of the previous links when I'm going in to access the Google the the docs and all the all of the resource that we have there. In um, my, um, I'm also on the board of the Archie Bray Foundation, and there's always um, a mention of the documents waiting to be read in the Google link, and then a Google link provided in the mm -hmm. lead up to the minutes. So maybe a system like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to be something where we're, because everybody's at different levels and uh, mm -hmm. like some of these committees that you're um, referring back to, Kathy had to have been over three years ago um, because I wasn't part of them. So, um, you know, it's just people are coming in and you can't remember who knows what and when the last time this was mentioned. So there kind of needs to be something that is a, a steady reminder of what the system mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, yeah, so that... new people come in and, or, you know, over the holidays, we all forget everything. Um, so like when you come back in January, there's this little reminder, oh, that's how this committee works. And that's not how my other committee works. And that's, you know, the, the, there's like uh -huh. these steady reminders that would be, I think, really helpful in a uh -huh. committee like this that's a, a little looser and we don't get together very often. Well, at least not now. No, and that's exactly what I was suggesting. And so I hate to keep throwing everything on the back of our minutes or this or that for easy reference, but it, I just think there's ways and, and there, there are ways out there that we can, i.e. put the links um, in an email to our agenda or something um, that people have readily act, ready access to go look at those Google Docs if they can't remember something about something that was done in the previous. Or even looking, you know, if a new committee gets together on a new art um, project or a new project, that they could back, go back and look at some previous art calls and see how they were done. So just a quick uh, way for quick reference for everybody. I also wonder, I mean, I hear, what I hear too coming out of this is um, opportunity for, um, uh, you know, I don't, maybe doing some work to uh, identify established ways for onboarding and training new people. Um, and, and maybe in the form of, of capturing video, like how do you, how do you capture some of the institutional knowledge that's already here that you can then share. And, um, so it's not just kind of lost as the next person, mm -hmm. um, you know, times out of their service. So, so maybe, maybe, you know, as we do our May meeting or something, we can look at, you know, we've been pretty project oriented, which is great because we want to get things done. But if you don't oil the machine, it, uh -huh. you know, you wind up with, with challenges from that. So maybe we can take a look at like what, uh, what other forms of subcommittees could do kind of some of the behind the scenes work that will benefit us as well. Yeah. I mean, and again, it, with, um, the torch being transferred from Peter to Courtney, um, we had standing, we had a standing budget committee. We had a standing um, process, not well, I don't want to say bylaws process and procedure, but more of that administrative committee. And some of those background things that you were talking about, and we just have, it appeared, as you say, have morphed into more of a project committee versus one that um, has some administrative, you know, those administrative committees and maybe the budget committee, you know, this is, you know, we are all on other boards and a lot of times the budget committees make the report every month. And maybe that's not necessary for us, but a quarterly budget report might not be awful to say, here's where we are. This is the money we have as a committee. These are the projects. This is where the money's coming in, those types of things. And I don't want to turn it into something boring, but it, you know, that, that's a good thought to have some of that. So um, Paisley, could you, when you send out minutes, could you put on the bottom of that information piece, the link to the Google Docs? Like the whole folder? Well, people should have access to the whole folder. Yeah, absolutely. The but yeah, the, that's what I'm thinking. The, the minutes are public though. The minutes go to, they're posted on the city website. So we would not want to put the link for our Google folder. Oh, no. Oh, not on the minutes, but what about our email of the minutes? 
to us, to just to the members. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm because this way everybody can just like go in, look at the folders. And the other part is I was, um, everybody has such great ideas about organizing different ways to organize those things. Um, maybe there's, you know, we're missing something when you go in, or maybe you see a better way to organize it. Um, I don't know, just, just to help us all answer some of those questions. I somewhere in there, I know there's a calendar and maybe it needs to be updated. <laughs> you know, as far as kind of activities that were standard throughout the year, like elections and like um, annual projects that we did or don't do kind of traditional start and end dates, those types of things. Like when the um, public art catalog comes out, mm -hmm. those kind of things that are. Yep. Which is, yeah, I, so no, I think all that's good. And, and Sony, great idea on the calendar um, to make that more evident. Um, dumb, dumb, dumb. I had just had a couple of things that they weren't on the agenda because they, I thought they had um, been waylaid for a while too and put on hold, but I was contacted by the Rattlesnake neighborhood about the sound wall. Um, that was put up that essentially runs east and west um, of Van Buren along I-90. And they are very excited about doing something on that wall. Um, and Lise, this is where I don't wanna move your project, but they also um, were just throwing out all different ideas. But one of the things that they were very interested in um, is our indigenous people's history and those types of things. So I, I mean, I really don't have any specifics because they're trying to um, organize themselves, but just wanted to say that that's a project that I think we'll be hearing about in the near future and they'll wanna be talking about. Um, we'll also in the future have a presentation for someone who wants to put signage on the 111 West Broadway building, which you all know is where Hadley has her paintings. Um, so we'll um, be looking at that in the future. And um, the Missoulian number three, Missoulian has said they want to do another public art guide. So we'll have more information about that for the next meeting. And um, I think that's all I have there. So some, some things to work on. So does anybody else have any other announcements or any, any things? Lovely. So with that, um, at 5.31, we can adjourn the meeting. Thanks guys. Thanks again for writing, for putting together that letter of cooperation. Lisa. Yeah, that's what I said. Welcome, James. Thanks. Bye guys. James, talk to you soon. Yeah.